The biggest lessons I've learned in my life are here. Through different topics, I'm going to inspire and motivate you to reach your success and your dreams. I'm so grateful that you're here on Journey to Success. So let's enjoy my next episode together. Hi, Alana. My name is Fabio from the Fabio Podcast, Success Stories. And today we're going to discuss your experience with eating disorders and how you manage this illness. How are you, Alana? I'm doing very well, Fabio. How are you? Good. Everything great. Thank you so much. So just a small introduction. So who is Alana? Alana is uh, an eating disorder survivor, correct? Yes. And uh, the founder of Freedom with Food and uh, Fitness. Yes. She dedicates her life to improving a woman's relationships with food and her bodies to pursue true health. But anyway, let's start from the beginning. So I don't think you had an eating disorder from the very start. So before that, how was your life? Can you describe your typical day. How was your typical day before this illness? Tell me. Uh, it was, you know, the typical life of a teenager slash young adult. I, I didn't really have an issue with food or my body really until I was about 22. But, you know, looking back on it, I did see some of the signs of the beginnings of disordered eating. Like, for example, mm. I, you know, would have pictures of, you know, these women with six pack abs and these flat yeah. stomachs so thin, like on my wall is inspiration. And, you know, I was taught how to count calories based on, you know, how much I wanted to weigh. And back in the day, we didn't have the calculators on our phones. It was just me yeah. using a handheld calculator. But yeah. I was just, I was just a normal teen. I did well in school. Yeah. I, you know, was, did well in extracurricular activities. I had friends, I had boyfriends, everything seemed, everything seemed fine. I think you are a millennial as well, right? Like there was a trend, you know, about how to be super thin and uh, be a model and uh, yes, so yes. in a very unhealthy way. Yes, I definitely grew up in the age of Paris Hilton and Nicole yeah. Richie and absolutely, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Unfortunately for this, uh, something changed in a, in a good way. But uh, what do you think about it? It change or it just uh, how the marketing want to show to us that maybe it didn't, uh, maybe it's just a, an, an appearance. So what do you think about it? Do you mean, do, do you think I, do you think I think that the wellness industry has improved? Mm -hmm. you it know, did? Yes and no. Okay. <laughs> I think no in terms of, I think they've just gotten more sneaky in terms of their marketing. I think now mm. it's, it's not a diet, it's a lifestyle and it's wellness and, you know, it's, it's for health, but there's, there's really no correlation, solid correlation scientifically between our weight and our health. Our health is made up of so much more than just our weight. That's simply one data point. So they're still conflating health with thinness and that's really not the right correlation to be making. So I think they've just gotten more sneaky in their marketing. But at the same time, I think social media has allowed there to be many more dissenting voices out there. I think yeah. there's a lot more body types and people with different opinions. And you know, there's an entire movement around the idea of intuitive eating. And that's what I am. I'm a certified intuitive eating counselor. So Luckily, now it's not just one voice from the media saying you need to be thin and you need to go on a diet. There are other camps of people in the health at every size space and the body positivity space and uh, the intuitive eating space that are pioneering against the diet culture message. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Well, anyway, uh, I was just thinking, right? So about this typical day, you... you you are, let's say, uh, drinking a coffee or eating uh, something. and But then let's say you realize that maybe your way to eat, your way to drink, maybe wasn't good enough, right? So what was the trigger? Like uh, what happened? What was the cause of it? What, what made you think that the way you were doing wasn't healthy? 
Gotcha. So, you know, well, the, the trigger that started my eating disorder was leaving grad school, graduating okay. grad school, because it was the first time in my life I didn't feel like I knew what my next step was. I felt very out of control about my life. There were a lot of question marks coming up in my life. It was the first time I wasn't going to be a student that received a grade or a ranking. And I had always hung my self-worth on my rank in various things. So I I didn't really know my own worth at that point. So I kind of used what I had learned about being thin equals being pretty, which equals being worthy and figured, well, that's one way that I could be worthy is I could be thin. I could be fit. So that's kind of how it started. And then in terms of how did I know I had a problem? It wasn't until I would say a couple of years that I actually understood how much of a problem it was. And one of the stories that I tell is when I was, I would say maybe 23, 24, I got on the scale and I was a hundred pounds. And at Ooh. five four, it's that's entirely too thin for anyone to be. And I just I knew I was a hundred pounds. I saw the number on the scale, but I still wasn't satisfied with my body. I was still very insecure about my body. It still didn't look the way I wanted it to. And it's just I had this question come up in my head of when is it gonna be enough? Right. It wasn't enough when I hit the first goal weight or the second goal weight or the third goal weight. So I finally realized, you know, trying to love my body by losing weight isn't going to be the solution because it hasn't been the solution yet. And I can't lose much more without putting myself in the hospital. So there has to be another way. And that's when I started to look into things like intuitive eating because there was this group of people who, these women who had decided that they could pursue health and be healthy and live these full and wonderful lives without having to be a slave to calorie counts and the number on the scale. So I wanted that life. Yeah. No, no, catch it. But there is something that I don't understand, right? So, I mean, your body was still uh, functioning uh, very well or, or not? Like I, I make just an example about myself. If I don't drink so much water or... I don't uh, eat uh, so much uh, greeny, you know? So it looks like I have a little bit of uh, arrhythmia, okay? So just a little bit, just not so much, but I I can feel it. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, did you have any issue? Uh, Did you feel that your body wasn't really uh, communicating very well with you or was just about uh, looking? You know, it, it was really about the look, but okay. in the pursuance of the look, my body was starting to show signs of malnourishment. I would get these like really weird ridges in my nails, like my nail beds were like crumbling, um, my hair there was falling out. Um, I couldn't think straight. You know, it was, I had such brain fog. I was lightheaded all of the time because I wasn't eating. So my body was trying to talk to me. It was telling me to eat and it was hungry and I just wasn't listening. I was very irritable all the time. And these are all signs of very chronic hunger. So you were I, ignoring. I, I was. I was, I, you know, I was lucky, you know, some people lose their hunger cues completely when they restrict. And I, I didn't get to that point. That never happened for me. But yeah, it was a whole lot of ignoring. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, what was the, um, I mean, just uh, describe me a typical uh, day of someone who has uh, um, uh, this disorder. You know, it's 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 funny that you asked that, um, and I'm glad that you asked that, because right. I think people have this notion that somebody with an eating disorder, their lives are so different, uh, and they're really not. It's just it's all bubbling under the surface. So the typical day for me would look like the typical day for most other people. I would say maybe the only different, well, you know what? (laughs) I got on the scale in the morning, you know, that I woke up, Mm -hmm. I would get on the scale, which I think millions of people do. I would have breakfast, but it would be very small. Like I would eat three meals and two snacks a day, but they were so small 
that they were only adding up to like 900 to 1,000 calories a day. So I was still eating. And when I was in public, like if I went out to dinner, I would eat a quote unquote normal amount, which is why my issues went undiagnosed because to everybody else, it looked like I was fine. I was eating normally. I was a normal weight. But it's just, it's the internal struggle. It's the, it's the thoughts that nobody sees that really separate somebody who has an issue and who doesn't have an issue. And obviously this could be different for somebody who, you know, purges, you know, someone with bulimia, obviously they're, they're, you know, expelling uh, a lot of their foods. Um, sometimes people have issues with laxatives. I definitely took laxatives in order to expel, um, a lot of body checking, a lot of when I was alone, checking my stomach in the mirror to see if it was flat or if it was defined. But other oh. than that, it's, it's, I mean, it's pretty much the same day as anybody else. It's not something that you recognize right away. That's what I'm understanding right now. Like, yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. The, um, only 6% of people with eating disorders are categorized as underweight. Yeah. So I, most I believe people, it. Yeah. Most people are walking around either quote unquote normal weight, overweight, obese, um, according to the BMI scale. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, you have, most people are walking around with disordered eating and they, they don't look stick thin. Because uh, you make as a habit and if you make as a habit, then it's your normality, right? And exactly. if it's your normality, then it's truly difficult to understand what's, what is wrong and what is right. It's li very dangerous, this, like truly. It's not something that you can recognize straight away and it can bring you down, you know? That's what I think, that what I'm understanding from the conversation with you. Absolutely. And I think you don't realize how crappy you feel on a diet until you're not on a diet. Like you don't realize how bad you feel when you're restricting your calories, when you feel like you're walking through quicksand all day, when you have brain fog and feel weak physically. And uh, it's just, you don't realize how bad you feel until you actually start nourishing your body consistently. And to your point, you don't realize that diet, like how disordered dieting is sometimes because everybody's doing it. It's like, it's like hard to find somebody who isn't on a diet or who isn't pursuing weight loss. But I like yeah. to say what's common and dieting is very common. What's common isn't always normal. Before we go through, if you're enjoying this podcast, please consider taking just three seconds to share it with someone else. It is a small gesture that could make a big difference in someone's day. Now, sit back and enjoy the rest of the episode. Well, catch it, catch it. Uh, this is a weird question, right? So maybe it's, it's a little bit um, uh, weird. Let, let's see. <laughs> so is uh, an eating disorder only in a way to lose weight or also to, to gain weight? Yeah, I mean, there are certainly people who, um, you know, have a disordered relationship with food because they want to mm, gain okay. weight. Um, it's, uh, there's also, you know, atypical anorexia where people in larger bodies have the same symptoms as somebody in smaller bodies, same disorder tender tendencies. So, yeah, it can look differently in a lot of ways. Okay, so then it wasn't really a stupid question. Great. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, can you share with us the breaking point? So, I'm sure there was a moment when you realized that eating in an unbalanced way wasn't the best for your body, right? So, what was truly the breaking point? Something that you truly realized, you know, that you had to change something. Uh, definitely the, the seeing the hundred pounds on the scale was one of them. And then one of the others mm -hmm. was I was following this blog by this woman who was a couple of years older than me. And she looked like she had the perfect life. Like she had the handsome husband and the beautiful house and she would bake and cook and it would be beautiful pictures of the food. And she would go out with her girlfriends and everything looked great. And she was a fitness coach. And one day she posted about how she was diagnosed with 
hypothalamic amenorrhea, which is when a woman loses her menstrual cycle. Okay. And her doctor had told her that she needed to gain, I think, 10 to 15 pounds or something because she had she was too thin. She was restricting too much. And she didn't look like she was restricting too much. She didn't look waif thin. She looked strong and healthy. But for her body structure, I guess, her body was just not getting what it was, what it needed. And when we do that, when we restrict for weight loss, especially women, we, our body will shut down systems that aren't necessary. So like our heart, our brain, our kidneys, our liver, all necessary. Your body will always try to keep those functioning, but something like a menstrual cycle, your Mm -hmm. body doesn't need to be doing that to survive. So it will shut it down. So to see somebody who I thought was so perfect and healthy and that I looked up to was apparently underneath the surface, having all this disordered eating and, and these problems with weight loss really made me think because she was having trouble conceiving. Um, and that was kind of the whole problem was like she, she wasn't getting her menstrual cycle and they wanted to have a baby and start their family. And it made me think like, wow, I could really screw up my future for a family one day when I want one. And that that really scared me too. Okay, understood. You know, I'm trying to make this uh, uh, targeted question because uh, I'm sure uh, between our listeners, uh, there is someone who has, uh, who may have some uh, um, eating disorder. And he, if he or she doesn't recognize, you know, at least you can help them. So it's very interesting what you are saying to us. So I've, 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 I truly love it. Uh, honestly, thank you so much, truly. And uh, all right, so okay, okay, so well, you saw someone that uh, was in her breaking point and you didn't imagine, so I think for you was a kind of an alarm, so I totally understand. And uh, what about the recovery? So, what did you do to recover? So, did someone decide to help you, or did you do everything on your own? So this question also is very important because, as I said, uh, our listeners, you know, can uh, uh, can notice better if they have this disorder, and maybe you can help with 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 it. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, so I I recovered pretty much on my own, mm. and I I don't even like saying that because I don't want people to think that it is easy. I don't want people to think that they should do it alone. I think that is my biggest regret. I don't regret having my eating disorder because it allowed me to write a book and speak on stages and help women across the world. I mean, from where I live in New Jersey all the way to Australia, it's allowed me to build a business um, and live out a life's purpose of mine to help other women. But So I don't regret that because it gave me so much, but I do regret not getting help sooner because I struggled so much harder than I needed to because I thought I had to do it on my own. I was very stubborn and prideful. I thought, you know, if I got help, it would mean that there was something truly wrong with me. It would be almost like an admittance of the fact that I was broken. Um, I didn't want people to know. I was really, really ashamed of it. I was in grad school, so I had barely any money, and I felt like it was a luxury to hire someone to help me. And I don't think any of those things are true anymore now, looking back on it. But hindsight is always 50, you know, hindsight is always 20 20. It's, I don't ever want anybody to feel like they have to do it on their own. Like I am somebody who has gone from one side of it to the other, to full recovery. And I want to give those strategies to somebody as a cheat sheet, as a, as a playbook so that they can fast track their recovery much faster than I did. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Well, uh, if I may, I don't think you you handled all your own. I mean, I think indirectly you dealt uh, with a lot of people around you because you were you were you are on the stage. So you you used to talk with uh, people around you and you wrote also a book. So you also wish to be um, an example for the people around you. You know what I mean? So it looks like indirectly 
a lot of people helped you, helped you, even if you you didn't know. You know what I mean? But it's oh, just 100%. my feeling. Oh yeah, <laughs> I I listen to podcast after yeah. podcast, read book after book, and it was almost like I was rewiring my own brain with people's messaging yeah. because I was listening to the same concepts over and over and over again from different people in different ways, and that was my way yeah. of rewiring my brain to realize that there is a group of women and men out there that live full, healthy lives, like mind, body, spirit, health, but they're not fixating on a goal weight. They're not fixating on how many calories or macros they're eating. They're not killing themselves in the gym. You don't have to do any of those things, but we're programmed to believe that we have to by diet culture. And that's, that's the crazy thing about you know, it's very funny because um, people don't understand how much powerful it is to listen to some motivational speaker, right? So, um, like Les Brown or uh, Anthony Robbins, so, you know, all these people, Eric Thomas. So, you can listen to them every day. You can uh, actually learn a lot. And, um, I mean... Uh, my 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 fiance calls Anthony Robbins my uncle. You know what I mean. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, it's very powerful. Uh, read, and uh, I don't know. Be be with them, even if they don't know you. You know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. I hope I hope people who just lurk on my Instagram are getting some value. And of course, yeah. I want to work with everybody. And I mean, I have yeah. a program that is virtual. So I have people, again, from New Jersey to Australia. It, I have payment plans. I have different tiers Beautiful. of programming. I have, I, I've made it so accessible for people to join the program. But even if you don't join, join the program, I hope that you know, they get value from my podcast or from my free resources yeah. or from the Instagram. And, exactly. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. All right. So, well, today you are in a better place. So who is Alana Van Del Sluis? Van Del yeah. Sluis, right? Yes, or not? Van Der Sluis, yes. Are you Dutch? Um, Originally Dutch? Van, Van Der Sluis? My husband is Dutch. Aha, uh-huh, I knew it. I'm in, in the Netherlands, yeah? Just you yes. know. Yes, very cool. <laughs> yes, um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm Italian, but yeah, he is, he is Dutch. Uh, who am I today? You know, it's so funny. If you would have asked me that question, Mm-hmm. Ten years ago, I would have said, you know, oh, I'm a teacher. I, you know, I would have thrown accolades at you and awards that I've gotten, okay. and you know, and that's. I don't think that's who I am at all. I think that I am a, a thought leader. I think I am a nurturer. I think I am funny. You know, like we, and it's taken me so long to realize this. And I hope that anybody who is struggling with their weight in their body hears me when I say. Your worth and your value are inherent. Like who you are as a person is not your job. It's not how much money you have in the bank account. It's not what it says on the scale. It is if you take away all of those things, who would you still be? And I think that's who I am. Thank you. Nice, nice. Love it. Uh, Well, is there anything else would you like to say before to conclude? Very, very beautiful uh, interview. Thank you so much, Alana. Of course. Thank you for having me. Yes. I want everybody to know that they have two weeks to pre-order my new right. book, Freedom with Food and Fitness. They can order Freedom with Food and Fitness on Amazon. They can pre-order it on Barnes and Noble. Uh, and if you pre-order the book before it releases on November 14th, I'm offering $250 in bonus gifts. And all you have to do is fill out a 30-second form to get those bonus gifts. Uh, so again, it's Freedom with Food and Fitness. It's on Amazon. It's on Barnes and Noble. Um, if you want to get those bonus gifts, it's freedomwithfoodandfitness.com slash pre-order, or you could just DM me on Instagram at Freedom with Food and Fitness and say, hey, can I get the pre-order link? And I will <laughs> personally send you everything that you need. But um, I think this book is so needed. It's very accessible. It's Half of it's about food and how to navigate nutrition as an intuitive eater. Half of it is about fitness and how to navigate uh, intuitive movement. And it's just very actionable tips that you can implement today. It's not a whole lot of fluff and philosophy. It's a whole lot of very tangible strategies that 
really, really helped me in my journey. So I just wanted to give that back to everybody else. Super. Thank you so much. And uh, with this, we can uh, close the episode. So thank you, Alana, for being here to the Fabi podcast. Thanks to my community to be always here. A hug and uh, see you next Wednesday. Cheers. Here we are. Congratulations. You just finished my entire episode. So the only thing I ask is to take a moment to give Journey to Success a rating. By the way, thank you so much for being here on Journey to Success. I'm very grateful. Thank you and see you next time.